You didn't paint for 50 years and then you started again and found that you had improved dramatically. That fascinated me. So can you just talk about this? Talk about what it was like before, what happened in the intervening 50 years, and then when you started again. Well, I started painting when I was a teenager and I just started out of the blue. I basically had a rudimentary understanding of technique and I painted our cottage almost like you would paint, uh, paint by numbers, you know, this was brown, this was green. It was very primitive, but there was something magical about the colors and depicting something on paper. Then when I was a senior in high school, I disappeared into the basement and had my own little artist studio there. and. It was very grounding to paint these watercolors. I learned that there was a, 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 an ability for self-expression, that I was somehow depicting the feelings of where I was at the time, whether it was a self-portrait or uh, paintings of other people or even landscapes. They were all depicting my inner world. I certainly didn't have words for that when I was young. I didn't know I was doing that. It's just that it satisfied something in me. And I'd run upstairs and show my parents and they'd look at it. I think unconsciously I was hoping they'd see me in them, but they didn't. That was beyond them. But I always sensed I was different from my family and that I didn't belong to them and that I wasn't safe with them, that they knew I was different and they knew that I was alive in a way they weren't and it threatened them. So it was sort of like being a prisoner doing sketches on a cell wall, if you will. In the basement? In the basement. It was in the basement, hidden away. It was in the, my dad's workshop, oddly, you know, but there was a table there and I was hidden away. But some paintings I didn't even show them. You know, I hid them under my bed. I had a big folder that you could put paintings in. I still have it. And some of them were just too personal of figures and, but it, it just wasn't a safe environment. But then I went away to college and got very busy, I, you know, with schoolwork and avoiding schoolwork and discovering modern dance and moving to New York and becoming a dancer and working to support myself. But I always vowed I would return to it when I was older. I think it required more access to my inner world and to a quiet place in me that also was something I discovered recently, a retreat from the world. Uh, I didn't need to be out with people, I needed to be in with myself. And painting was a way to relate to myself, to express what was going on inside of me, whether it was a self-portrait or just a face with feelings or a landscape with a dramatic sky or a little house lost in a big world. And it was really, it was really me talking to myself. And that was a huge shift, that it really was a way to look at myself. And I can never control how they come out. I'm always at their mercy, I feel. But I approach it really with humility. And I always feel they tell me my paintings. I, you know, I don't have enough technique to hide in technique, which is actually a good thing. I have enough technique to depict things, but I can't hide in technique. But in the subsequent 50 years, I, I moved to New York. I found a safe place to be me, to explore my psyche. And I started to heal from that history. I always said I came here to be a dancer and be myself, but I think at a, the deepest level, I came here to save my soul from the rampage of my family. That they, they saw that I was alive and they wanted to kill that. So that's not something you just get over in a minute. I had to warm up to that and I did dance professionally, but I was dancing for someone else. It was his vision and I lived in 
a bombed out ghetto in the 80s. It was so dangerous, even my regular friends wouldn't come visit me. And I lived in the basement, and I found my voice as a writer, which really was a precursor to finding my voice as a painter. And now both of my parents have died, but believe me, those tyrants can live in our head forever, if you wish. But I've, I've killed them. I've killed my parents. I've killed their influence on me. And they don't rule me anymore. And it's, I just think it took, it took a long time to do that. And I really became a self. I became me. And I moved into a proactive value of my being, my identity. I feel like life made me, not my parents. I do believe in evolution, and some of us just evolve beyond our backgrounds. We're just bigger than them. They hate us for it, want to kill us for it, but we don't belong to them. We belong to life, and I belong to life, not them. I don't belong to their limits, even though, they're, like I say, their limits hurt me, constricted me, threw me off course. But then over time, I discovered I belong to life, and belonging to life I can paint. I can paint about life, my life, as me. I recently did one of Grand Central Station. That's a big portal. Grand Central is grand and it's central. And at the bottom it has an opening with light. And it's like an, it's almost an abstraction. But I drew it that way. There's depth in that. That the, the light is, you can enter this Grand Central and become you. You can become you. This is the Grand Central. This is the grand opening to be you. To leave the smallness of your background and enter the bigness of you. The Grand Central. Your Grand Center. So, uh, it's not just a scene. It's iconic. So could you tell me about your cityscape that you did of Paris? Yes. I did a painting of the Seine. I had a wonderful hotel room, and I looked out my hotel window, and there was this, the river Seine. And it was magical. The sun was setting and glistening on the water. And it's a view that goes up the river through arched bridges and... Uh, there's the Pont Neuf is right in front, and Ile de la Cité, the big island in the middle of the Seine. But the river is always light, and it is light, and it goes, continues up the river to like a glowing sunset or sunrise. So it has this hopeful feel to it, that even through civilization, the river flows, the river of life, the river of hope the river that's bigger than all of the structure of civilization in the world. The river flows, and, uh, and I'm on that river.